Hello, my loves. Welcome to another episode of the Becoming You podcast. And on today's topic, I'm going to be talk- talking to you about how to emotionally regulate yourself. I received this question through one of my TikTok followers, um, and she'd asked, how do I regulate myself? And I thought that was such a great question because I talk a lot about emotional regulation in my podcast and my content because that really is the key to staying calm while your kids are maybe annoying the crap out of you, triggering you, etc. So what are the tangible, actionable steps to learning how to emotionally regulate yourself? Now, before I dive you, I dive into and give you steps one, two, three, etc. Let's first of all, get very clear on what emotional regulation means. To me, what it means is that Let me tell you what it does not mean. It doesn't mean that you never get upset or depressed or angry. It does not mean that you never have feelings and you just are calm and zen all the time. That is not what emotional regulation is. What emotional regulation means is that you are aware of your feelings and you're able to find your center and come back to feeling safe despite your feelings. So. You have practiced so much of knowing what your feelings are, being aware of when you are experiencing these feelings and having some separation between those feelings and who you are, and then having the tools to calm down and come back to a sense of like centeredness, groundedness, a calm place. So... Emotional regulation for some people might take five minutes in certain situations. And for others, it could take, you know, a day or two. Just recently, I came back from my summer vacation in India. And I, that was a couple of weeks that I felt really, really down. Like you could have almost called it like depression. I just felt like this gray cloud hanging over me all the time. And coupled with the fact that You know, my kids were having a tough time with the jet lag and we were having some meltdowns in our house. And I literally felt like I was failing. So sometimes this resulted in me reacting in ways that I wasn't proud of with my children in certain situations. But for a couple of days, like all I wanted to do was sleep. So that is me being emotionally dysregulated, right? Like I couldn't I wasn't feeling safe for a couple of days in who I was showing up as in my life. So it took me a couple of days to get back to some sort of normalcy and start to feel safe in my body again and to start feeling emotionally safe to be in my life, right? So that's emotional dysregulation, what I was feeling. And I wanted to give you a real life example of we can't always regulate ourselves within a couple of minutes or a few minutes. Um, And sometimes it does take days and it's okay. It's okay. We're all doing the best we can. And there's no shame in when you're feeling emotionally dysregulated and then how long it takes you to become regulated again. But today I'm going to share with you on what are the basic things that you can do to be emotionally regulated, especially around your kids, right? So step number one is you really have to be aware of your mindset. Um, And what I mean by that is when you are having a tough moment with your child, what is your point of view or perspective in that moment? Oftentimes, we fall into stories really, really quickly about who our children are, what we project their futures to look like, We assume that their personalities are set in stone, that maybe we have worked for months on trying to change a certain aspect of their personality or trait, and they're not showing those changes. So we automatically assume that they're not capable of change when it comes to this personality trait, et cetera. So how do we, so your perspective in that moment is really, really important because that is going to add to the emotional dysregulation. Um, In order to regulate yourself, you have got to get into a more positive mindset and expand the fact that there are way more possibilities available to you in that moment 
And it's your job to step into those possibilities. So in that moment that you're having a tough time and you have told your child a million times on what to do, and yet again, they have forgotten or they have failed to. If you are emotionally dysregulated, you're most likely assuming this is never going to change. They don't care. They're not putting in the effort. I feel disrespected, right? Those are all very valid and true. Does not mean it's not. But you can also just become aware of what is my mindset in this moment? Is it helping me get to a calmer place? Or is it making me get deeper into the feeling that I'm feeling now? This is the hardest thing to do. This is, when I say it, it sounds really easy. But when you're in the moment experiencing your feelings and your body is being flooded with sensations that don't feel good, this is the hardest thing in the world to do. Okay. But this is step number one in emotional regulation is to do a quick check-in and realize what is my mindset in this moment? Am I believing that I'm capable of doing this and my child is capable of doing this? Or am I assuming that things will never change and I am feeling resentful and disrespected? The moment you catch that mindset is the moment you start to slow down the train that has already left the station. And it's even harder to reverse the train, but it is possible. All right. And then, you know, going in that same thread, do you believe that they are doing the things that they're doing to make life hard for you? Or do you believe that they're having a hard time? This is something that I've learned through a coaching program that I'm going myself, going through myself, is that we often assume that our kids are just doing things to be difficult. And we forget that every child wants to please their parent and the reason that they're not doing the thing that we're asking them or encouraging them to do is because there is something that's stopping them. They're having a hard time for whatever reason. And it is our job as a parent to get to the root of why is it that they're having a hard time. So for example, this morning, my son did not want to go to school. He has been having a hard time transitioning from summer to his new classroom, his new teacher. And added to the fact that there's not many, there's not any close friends of his. One of the reasons that he gets super excited about school is that he gets to see his friends. And last year, he had a ton of very good friends in his classroom. And this year, he does not have any of his close friends. And he has to do the work of making new friends. And he doesn't like it. He's uncomfortable. And he's also, you know, so what's, what happened this morning was that he has not been wanting to go to school. And this is a pattern we have seen in the last week, which was the first week of school. And it started again today. So yes, as a parent, it's very stressful to get up in the morning, first day of the week, and be faced with a child that is, you know, hitting the brakes and does not want to go to school. And it's very normal to start feeling scared about what is the rest of the year going to look like? And I was certainly starting to get into that space. What is the rest of the year going to look like? Is it going to be this hard? Is it going to be a battle and a struggle every single day? Right. And when we get into that mindset, of course, your body starts to feel overwhelmed. Your mindset starts to feel overwhelmed and it, you don't even want to try, right? Like you just, you go into a very fearful place. And that's when the hard lining starts to happen. Like you have to go to school or else. And we start putting in really hard consequences, right? We give them ultimatums. And I could have easily done that, which knowing my kid's personality, it would have spiraled into a major meltdown and a major fight, which would have left all of us feeling just like crap. So I caught my mindset in that moment and I had to shift it by saying, you know what, I don't have to worry about the rest of the school year. Yes, it might be a struggle bus, but those kind of thoughts are not helping me. And instead, I just have to focus on getting his foot out the door for today and see how he can get through today. So it's about acknowledging your fears, but also realizing that your fears are adding to the problem that you are facing. And I also realized that my child was having a hard time and he wasn't giving me a hard time. He was giving, it wasn't about me at all in that moment. It was because he was struggling and he does not have the capacity or the capability yet because of the fact that he's so young to 
get in touch with his like real reasons as to why he doesn't want to go to school. All he knows is that I don't want to go to school. My parents are making me. Right. So we got through it. And step one of that was remembering my mindset, catching myself when I went into the most fearful places. Number two is now taking is becoming aware of your body. Right. We've talked about the mindset and having a mindset shift will definitely affect how your body is feeling. But when we don't do the mindset shift, what is happening in your body is that it's being flooded with emotions, which leads to sensations that don't feel good. And as a result of that, we start to tense up. We start to clench, like clench up. Our chest gets tighter. Our stomach gets tighter. Our breath gets shorter. And we start to go into fight or flight mode, which again is emotional dysregulation, right? We feel that we are in danger. We are fighting for us to be correct. And oftentimes when we are fighting for us to be correct and get our own way, our brain translates that as this is survival. Like I'm kicking in my heels. I've got to get this, right? If he doesn't go to school today, then it means that it's going to be like this for the rest of the year and I can't handle it, right? So we go into that fight or flight mode and it causes all of these physiological reactions to happen in our body. So even though you may not want to, you really have to check in and notice what your breath is like and take some deep breaths. And I did that today. I breathed in through my nose and I breathed out through my mouth to help calm myself down or at least just turn my perspective away from what is the crisis that was happening in front of me and back into my body. The minute we are back in our bodies, we can start to become present and start to think just a little bit more clearly and start to often like what it means to emotionally regulate ourselves starts with our body. The minute you start to notice your breath and start to slow down your breath, you will start to calm down. And from a calm place, we can then choose our thoughts differently and we can start to process our emotions and check in with ourselves to ask, what is it that I need in this moment to feel better? Right. And that answer cannot be, I need my child to do this for me. Because your child in that moment then has control over your regulation. And we cannot put that responsibility on our children. Your child needs you to regulate yourself so that they can then find their center and calmness. So become aware of your body. And do you need to take a few moments to breathe to allow your heart rate to drop? Okay. Step number three on how do I emotionally regulate myself is how tightly are you holding on to the outcome you desire for your child? As parents, we often, it'll make our life so simple if our kids just did what we asked them to do all the time and behave in ways we want them to do so that we can be reassured that they are turning into the humans we want them to become. But that doesn't happen. Right. And we have to learn to trust and accept that they are becoming who they are meant to be, whether it's for better or for worse. Right. That doesn't mean encouraging habits that are not healthy. It means there's a fine balance that we need to walk between letting go of the clenching and I need things to go a certain way. You got to release some in order to tighten it back up again, right? If we tighten up too much and hold the reins too much, it's going to make them want to cut the cords all together. What we want to do is keep that connection to us so we can gently guide them, right? Not forcefully guide them, but for you wouldn't even be guiding them, like forcefully making them do what we want us to do. What we want to get into the habit is gently guiding them. So how can you work on trusting and surrendering and accepting more? And that is an emotional regulation. I have to tell myself in the moment that everything is going to work out and be okay. That it's okay if he's missed, you know, one day of school last week and he's about to miss one day of school this week. I'm going to trust that he is capable and he can figure this out. 
right? And if that means it's missing one day today to make the rest of the week easier, I'm going to trust. I don't have the answers. Maybe tomorrow will be the same story, right? But I have to trust that he is going to turn out to be okay. So oftentimes when I work with my clients, what I find is that they're very focused on having things like be done the way they expect them to be done by their children. There is no room for flexibility and there's no, there's no mindset to believe that maybe my child will get to where I want them to be if I trust and allow them to do things their way, right? So that's step number three. How tightly am I holding on to the outcome I desire for my child? And can I trust that there might be a different way to get the outcome that we want? Am I believing that my way is the only way? Or can I start to have a conversation with my child on goals that are common, that we both want, and find a different way of getting there? right? Like for my son, the goal is for him to get to school, right? And so does he. He loves school. But what he's finding scary now is the part of the, the discomfort that comes with making new friends. And his body is feeling overwhelmed with the same thoughts that I tend to have, right? What if the rest of the year is this hard? What if I go the whole year and I don't make any friends? What if every day feels this hard and I have to get up and go to school, right? He's in that same mindset. So only by adjusting my perspective and, and accepting that my way is not the right way, which is just override your feelings and just get your shoes on and get out the door, right? But adjusting. So one of the things that we did today was I let go of all the other tasks that he had to get done that we normally expect him to do before school, which is pack his bag, pack his snack, be part of help getting his lunch ready you know, getting dressed, like me and my husband did all of that for him to alleviate some of the overwhelm of him getting ready for school. So I packed his bag and I actually verbalized that. And I said, look, I already know you're having a really hard time getting out the door today. So I'm going to take everything else off of your plate to make this as easy as possible for you. So that's what I'm talking about in terms of flexibility, right? Because before I was one of those hardlining moms where I'd be like, nope, you got to get to school and you got to do all of these things too. Because God forbid that, you know, I didn't want him to like not do his chores, not do his tasks, fall short of the expectations I had for him, right? So let focusing on the long-term goal that you have for your child will will help with regulating your own emotions so that you're not projecting your worst fears on them and acting from that point of view. Number four, we're gonna talk about some long-term plans. So I've just given you three short-term things in terms of mindset and body, et cetera. So what are some long-term plans? Because there has to be a long-term, more sustainable plan, right? Because you cannot white knuckle it at every time in the moment. So some of the long-term plan is, are you taking good care of yourself through sleep, through exercise, through your food, and your emotional attunement? And what I mean by emotional attunement is, are you doing the work of being aware of how am I feeling in this moment? So if you've had a stressful day, you might be on the surface level realize you've had a hard day, right? That's that's something that we can all do. I've had a tough day at work. I'm really stressed out. But what we don't realize is that we bring that stress home and we let it out in different ways onto our family. So emotional attunement would mean, let's say you have a 10 minute drive home from work and you've had a super tough day. It means maybe you take a 20 minute drive, right? To Take a walk outside to go to a park and just decompress before you walk in the door. That is what I mean by emotional attunement. Saying, I've had a really rough day. I know that if I go walk into the door right now and go into the thick of things, into the rush of like dinner and activities and all that stuff, like I'm not going to do so great with my kid. 
And even if that means you're going to be late for an activity, right, to the next activity, that's okay because my emotional regulation is more helpful for my kids than me trying to rush them to an activity to be on time. And oftentimes when we are deprived of sleep, when we're not taking care of ourselves in terms of how we're eating, drinking water, or moving our bodies, or doing our spiritual practices, emotional regulation becomes really, really hard when you're not feeding yourself the right things. So expecting yourself to be emotionally regulated when you're depriving yourself of all the building blocks of it is not fair to you, right? So make sure before you start this work, how kind am I being to myself? How good am I being to myself? The more you nourish yourself, the safer it becomes, the easier it becomes for emotional regulation. And the final long-term plan is what are the emotional wounds and fears that stop you from being able to be in the present moment and in your body? Because emotional regulation happens in the present moment. It doesn't happen in the past. It does not happen in the future. It happens right now in the moment. And oftentimes, we are not able to emotionally regulate ourselves because we are very disconnected from our bodies because we don't feel safe to be in our bodies, because things have happened in the past that have told us it's not safe to be in your body, let's disconnect. This emotion is too much for me to feel. This shame is too much for me to feel. This fear is too much for me to feel. So I'm going to think my way through it and not feel my way through it, right? And oftentimes those incidences and experiences in our life make us not feel good enough about who we are. And we are convinced that we have to prove ourselves to the world over and over and over again through all the things that we do in our life and our roles that we play. So emotional dysregulation happens because oftentimes we don't feel good enough about who we are and we don't like ourselves. So the world feels like a threat. When the world feels like a threat, that it's out to prove that we are not good enough, right? When you start to believe something, you start to look for evidence outside of you to prove that belief, right? We're always scanning everything around us to prove us, to prove our beliefs, not disprove it, right? That's why it's so hard to like pick up a new belief and make, make that become true because we are so trained to look for evidence for the other. So when you feel like I'm not good enough, I'm not capable enough, I'm not doing things well enough, things are not going fast enough in life, I'm not yet where I want to be. When we feel that way about ourselves, this is why self-love and all the work that comes with self-healing is so important. When we feel that way about ourselves, we tend to become very easily dysregulated because the world feels like Like we're constantly trying to prove to the world otherwise, right? Through all the things that we do. So if you have a deep fear that you're not capable enough, that you don't have what it takes, all the actions you take in life is a fear response of trying to prove to yourself that you are enough, right? But it doesn't come in a very helpful way. You you come at it from a very fearful place, which then again, we've talked about how that affects your body and all the sensations that you feel and you're in a constant defense mode in life. You're not in a receiving mode. You're not in a relaxed mode. If you're constantly out to prove yourself, then there's a deep belief that you're not enough, right? When we feel like we're not enough, we don't feel like we are safe to be who we are. And so we are constantly working, 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 working all the time, worry all the time. And all of that translates into emotional dysregulation. And so you have to do the work of healing your inner child, becoming emotionally aware and emotionally attuned and making yourself a priority so that you can be a regulated parent for your children, which is why I build my entire coaching parenting practice on inner child work and breath work as a practice 
to help with the inner child healing and the self-healing, right? Because it combines the mind and the body into the healing. So if you love this, I have a workshop that is coming up on September 17th. I'm going to drop the link in the show notes. Make sure you sign up for that on, you know, it's, it's about your parenting. I don't have the specific title yet, which is why I'm hesitating to say what it is. But there is a free workshop that I am working on on September 17th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And no matter the title of the workshop, going to be designed to help you become the parent that you desire to be without all the conflict and the second guessing that you feel. So make sure you sign up for that. And you can also feel free to attend any of my free work, breathwork workshops that I offer twice a month. All right. I love you guys so much. Take care and I'll catch you on the next episode.